So if you're looking at those wires, you might be wondering what size wire is the power company pulling. Our concrete survived the freeze. Our meter base frame is all set up. The horizontal struts are loosely installed. Just unboxing the meter panel, making sure all the measurements are correct to make sure it's all gonna fit on there. So just capping off the top of our panel to make it waterproof. We're actually entering through the bottom and then coming out the side. So now we're just bolting on the panels through the back into the uni strut. And there are these spring nuts, which are pretty cool. So you can easily screw in the bolts from inside the meter panel. You push them inside that uni strut and you turn it and the spring will hold it in position. And the main conductors will come up from below. And right now we're thinking maybe it'll come up on the left side and the conductors will move around to the top and go out the sides of the panel. There's the goats. Have a nice day. And this is what we're going to build. This is the final result before the wires have been pulled and before the meter's been installed. This is our meter panel in the center that we'll be connecting to these two disconnects. I'm gonna have to look into trying to seal these up a little bit better. They're supposed to be outdoor panels. To figure out where the water's getting in, it could just be wind-driven rain. This specific panel, it's the BR model something, 200 amp panel. Does not have the copper bus or anything. It does have the feed through lugs here. We're gonna actually run copper wires and that'll be a three-aught conductor that will run between the panels. So our line side will come in to the top, the two hots here and then to the neutral. This is our neutral bar. And then the load side is on this end. I'll be wiring those up, going down a low. That'll be a schedule 80 going down into the ground. I'm going to our build site here. Same thing on this side. Two inch conduit going down into the ground. So the neutral and the ground will be bonded in this first disconnect off the main panel. Same for this other 200 amp panel. There's a little hole here in the back that I've plugged with some plastic that I purchased off of uh, Amazon. Couldn't find those hole plugs that size. Those fit perfectly. So once we have all three panels roughly placed in position, we can slide them around as needed. And here's our knockout on this 200 amp panel. And then I'll connect that via a conduit chase here between the two. These are the offsets I'm using. So again, it's a service lateral from the transformer. It's an underground service. There's a transformer on a pole in our neighbor's property, about 244 feet. And it comes up here below our meter base. We're still sliding everything around to make sure it lines up. That's a Schedule 80 conduit, three inch conduit up into the bottom of the panel. Now, the other interesting thing is that per the power company's instructions, we're going to ground the meter panel itself. In some places, they'll have you ground the two disconnects on either side. We're using a number four bare copper and then four wires are actually running to the building so that our building will be sub panels. All right, here's my method of uh, stripping this three aught copper doesn't have to be pretty on the outside as long as you don't injure the uh, copper inside. I use these these cutters here. I could just use the razor blade just to score the outside. So this helps me do it nice and straight. This I have to be a little more artistic. Most electricians just use a razor blade. So I scored all the way around and then I've also scored along the side here. Again this is 3 out copper. This outer layer came off really easy and then we should be able to just kind of rock it a little bit and it should break away where the score happened. Now we're just installing some receptacles below each of the disconnect panels. It's going to be a 20 amp breaker on each and of course we're using the uh, dual rated wires, wires that can run inside wet locations. So we just add the terminal and the nut for the conduit to come up into the panel on each side, outlet box down there. So now I'm just unpacking and figuring out the waterproof covers. There's a lot of different parts. You gotta make sure you follow the instructions to hook them up correctly. In this case, it, it's even labeled pretty well. The line side's got a label that says from breaker. <laughs> that pretty much spells it out for you. If you're gonna continue the circuit past that particular receptacle to say another receptacle, if you wanted that receptacle to be protected, you'd wanna come off the load side. In other words, the, the ground fault protection won't work downstream if you don't hook it up right. And my little trick for remembering the hot side versus the neutral is brass is black 
or the hot side and the silver is white or neutral. Now on a cheaper receptacle, backstabbing is not a good idea. These are actually a little better design. When you tighten up the screws, it has a little clamp in there that holds the wire. It's a lot better than the tension design. And now I'm working on the uh, meter panel in the center, installing the lugs. These are double lugs. They came with uh, a washer. I guess there's different installation methods. I wasn't quite sure where to put that washer. I don't think I even used it. And so we ran these short three-aught conductors from the, the meter panel to each of the disconnects, two hots and a neutral. Some people just do it by feel or whatever. These are the first panels I've ever done. So I'm definitely following the torque specs. And I marked my second hot leg with the red tape. The neutrals are marked with white electrical tape. Once you get above a certain gauge, the wire is all black. And I just put some duct tape over the front of the meter panel. There's some cardboard in there, but it takes us forever to do things. So, you know, a lot of rain comes and goes, the weather and such. But so the power company wires are coming up from underground. There's like three knockouts below and they want you to come up on the left side. And we came up in the center, which was an approved option. And it just worked out better for where our panels were going to be positioned. My son is seriously going up fast. I mean, when we started this, this project, he was a little guy. It's great to have him help out on these jobs. We passed the inspection, so that was, that was the main thing. And the power company came out and pulled the wires. So they ran a 4 aught aluminum triplex. I don't think anytime soon we'll be pulling, you know, anything near 400 amps, let alone 200 amps. If you're going under the NEC, they're thinking those wires are too small. Yeah, so they have a different set of rules that they play by. Everything on the other side of the meter is the power company's um, expertise. But I think they're also just doing a numbers game when it comes to the practicality, the reality of the fact that, you know, most likely with LED lights and if you're not using a tankless water heater and things like that, I don't think there's really going to be any issues. I'm, I'm prob we probably would have been fine with a 200 amp service. And he also knew that some of our big plans and big dreams were, you know, years down the road. We just want to give ourselves as many options as possible. Dig that ditch once, run that conduit once. When you finally get something done, it's just, it gets a great sense of accomplishment. We're uh, happy with our progress. And so we've got the water run most of the way. We now have electricity at the build site. Um, haven't broken ground yet, but um, I just have a couple more connections to hook up for the water. We'll have water, electricity, and what else is there? Uh, the building materials. <laughs> got got to buy building materials. Uh, but anyway, which is a benefit to it taking longer because you can kind of spread out your cost. We have a new smart meter. <laughs> so, so it seems to be working. We've plugged in some things and whatnot, but uh, we're just super excited to have gotten this far and survived.